Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and you may remember a little while ago we looked at the Corsair Hydro X series of custom loop water cooling. Well, now they've got their configurator, we thought we'd take a look and see, well, how easy it actually is to spec everything up. Newbies, this one's for you. So when you first actually land on the Corsair Hydro X uh, custom cooling configurator, this is the screen that you're actually going to be greeted with. And uh, you actually have a few different choices here. Uh, you can sort of change your language, uh, change your location. I'm actually going to uh, change this to global because it does give us a few more options uh, towards the end. Now, you do also get the option of getting started straight away, or if you have a configuration code, you can actually put this in and sort of bring up a system that you may have already configured or one that your friend may have configured. Obviously, we're going to uh, just click on the get started button. The first step is entering what computer chassis or case you're going to be using. So obviously, uh, because it is Corsair, there are a lot of uh, Corsair models on here. Uh, if we actually type in um, another brand, then it will actually come up with some of their models. So you can see that we've got some Cooler Master ones here as well. Uh, but it is worth noting that you won't get kind of the full uh, sort of blown out uh, view of how it's going to look with all of the components in there. So because of that, we are actually going to stick with Corsair. Uh, obviously, they, they are going to add a lot more uh, at a later date. Now, there are quite a few models. I mean, there's 102 results that have come up just for the word Corsair. The one that we're going to use purely because it's one of their latest ones that's kind of, I guess, the most proficient uh, in terms of water cooling is going to be the 680X. Uh, we have done a, a time-lapse build on this and uh, everyone seems to love this chassis. So we might as well stick with that. So so you get the choice of obviously the black or the white, you can click on here, you can zoom in and get kind of a better view of what the chassis itself looks like. So we're going to select that one and click on next. The next stage is entering the motherboard that we're going to use. So um, again, you can enter the motherboard model or you can simply sort of scroll down the bottom. You can see that there's kind of, you know, a few of the featured ones. So we've got the MSI, we've got some Gigabyte, uh, Zeus and so forth. So uh, let's have a look and sort of see what models we can find. Uh, if we look at, say, Gigabyte, uh, I wonder if they've got any of the X570 boards on here. So they have. So uh, this kind of goes to show, you know, how up to date this is. They have actually got some of the X570 boards on here and one of my favorites especially from the x570 range is got to be this the uh aurus extreme x570 purely because it doesn't have a fan on it and it looks pretty cool so we're going to select that and then we're going to click um you can click on next or as you can see up here it's actually come up with what your cpu model is and it's really clever because it's only giving us choices that are compatible with that motherboard so there's no intel in there it is all uh, am4 socket based uh, processors so it isn't out yet, so we're not going to choose the 3950X. That comes out in September, but the 3900X is out, and we've done a review on that. Definitely worth checking out. So we're going to pick that, uh, and that's basically our combination now um, for, for the processor. Next step is uh, down to the graphics card. So uh, obviously you get the choice of AMD or NVIDIA. If we choose AMD, you can see the featured ones sort of uh, change down here. A lot of Vega 64s, uh, Vega 56. I'm not actually sure whether they've got the 5700 XT and the 5700 in there yet, uh, because obviously they are quite new and uh, it's all down to it as kind of if they've actually made a block for it. So we're gonna keep this kind of quite simple. You do get a choice of different brands you can choose from, you know, your Asus, EVGA, Gigabyte, uh, Game Ward, KFA2 and even some brands that you may not have heard of, uh, Maxun, Manly, which are kind of specific more to the Asia regions. So uh, I'm actually just going to go with uh, an NVIDIA uh, reference, RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition. Uh, and when you actually click on this, um, it, it asks you basically how many do you have? Do you have one, two or three? I'm going to go with two just so we can sort of see how that's going to look. Uh, but yeah, again, gives you a, a little bit more configuration option compared to what you'd, I guess, typically expect. Now, what you can see is kind of a full uh, blown view of how this is actually going to look. So uh, as I say, if you picked a chassis that wasn't Corsair, I believe it just comes up with kind of a, a generic Corsair chassis here. But because we did choose the 680X, it's showing us exactly how that's going to look. So you can see that we have our two graphics cards in there and it is uh, sort of connected already. So uh, it kind of, you know, gives you an idea as to how it's going to look and how you actually sort of need to start connecting uh, your loop in general. You get a view of the CPU block and also you can see the radiator at the top and down the bottom. Tells us what our PC configuration actually is. So what computer case we've gone, for, uh, gone with, the motherboard and the CPU and also the graphics card and of course 
how many. We're then gonna click on the C recommended setup button. So once we go on here, it will just uh, again, kind of drill down and show us, you know, what we've actually chosen. So you can see that we have the XC7 RGB and it does actually ask us, are you overclocking your CPU? If we choose yes, it will actually uh, change the radiator configuration. So if we didn't have the two graphics cards in there, we may only have a, a single 360 mil rad. But because uh, if we choose yes on there, it will actually add in uh, a, a 240 at the top as well as the 360 at the front, just because it knows it needs that extra surface area because you're gonna be putting through a little bit more heat, a little bit more power through the CPU. Uh, so we're gonna choose no for now because uh, I already saw before, because we have chosen two GPUs, we have got the 360 240 mil uh, set up already. So it's automatically chosen the XC7 RGB, which is for the AM4 socket. If we went with HEDT, it would have chose the, uh, the slightly beefier XC9. So we're gonna click next, it takes us down to the graphics cards and you get a view of kind of how the graphics cards look. And this is really cool because if you wanna kind of, you know, scroll over it, it will actually show you what the graphics card will look like in a kind of vertical orientation as opposed to your, your typical horizontal. Um, I'm not actually sure, I don't even believe you can do um, vertical configurations on two graphics cards, but it just gives you a, a general view as to, I guess, how the block looks, you know, before you've actually uh, bought it and seen it yourself. Uh, and one of the cool things that I love about the GPU block is this built-in flow meter just over here. It's really, really cool. Um, I just love the fact that, you know, it's given, given, I guess, new users and newbies something to look at so they know that, you know, everything's working as it should be and the water's actually uh, flowing around or the, the, the liquid is flowing around. So uh, yeah, in here it tells us what graphics card uh, GPU blocks we've gone with. So the XG7 RGB 20 series for the TI Founders Edition. Uh, we've got the multi-card kit, which is obviously the, uh, the the small amount of tubing to go between the cards that you can uh, that you can see in the picture, and uh, some of the compression fittings as well, uh, 12 mil outer diameter, uh, just to connect them two cards up. Um, so yeah, it kind of you know tells you where you need to sort of go from here. Uh, again, it asks us if we're overclocking our GPU. We're not. Um, I, I, it's personal opinion, obviously. I don't think there's really much need, especially if you're running 22080 Ti's. That's pretty beefy as it is. What are you running that, you know, particularly can't run on 22080 Ti Founders Editions? So we're gonna click next again. And then you get a view of obviously the radiators. So you can see that we have a 240 mil at the top and also the 360 uh, down the front. Now there are different stages as well. So there's kind of stage one, which you can see which changes over to a slightly smaller radiator, uh, less surface area, obviously. Stage two, and uh, in certain setups and certain chassis, if they do support it, there is a stage three where uh, more than likely it would turn this 240 mil rad into a 360 at the top. So you'd have a 360 at the top and a 360 at the front. So we're gonna stick with stage two. That seems, you know, pretty decent for two GPUs and one CPU. And then we're gonna click on next. Now this is where it sort of goes into fans. Now uh, it has actually popped up with this message. Your case contains Corsair fans suitable for a custom cooling system. The number of including fans has been deducted for the total to optimize the cost for you. So basically this chassis does come with fans in the front. And what it's basically telling me is that we're not gonna be wasting money on buying extra fans that kind of we already have that we can already utilize for the Corsair 680X. So uh, you can actually obviously change these out if you want. So the fans that do come included are the LL RGB PWM fans. If you wanted to change for maybe the ML Pros, uh, again, it changes the view here so you can see what it looks like, but that's when it's gonna start adding cost on because you're gonna then have to change out the front ones uh, based on you know these ones as opposed to uh, the ones that actually come with the chassis. You can change for all different ones and like I say, it gives you a view of all of these. Or if you're not a massive fan of RGB, I don't know why you wouldn't be, but if you're not, you can change over to just the ML PWM or the ML Pro. Uh, we're gonna stick with RGB and we're gonna stick with the OL RGB uh, PWM as well, purely because the chassis comes with it. So, you know, optimizing cost and everything, this seems kind of, you know, the perfect way forward. So we're gonna click next, and this is when it shows us our res pump combo. So we've got the XD5 RGB, uh, which is a D5 pump reservoir. Now, a lot of talk about D5 pumps uh, because a lot of brands over sort of, you know, time have kind of faked and lied about D5s. Uh, we actually know for a fact that the D5 pump that's in here is actually made by uh, the parent company of Liang. So it is, a proper, authentic, genuine D5 pump. Uh, this is kind of the only pump reservoir they actually do at the moment, the XD5. I'm hoping that they may come out with some sort of bigger ones later on, but you know, this has IQ built into it, RGB, uh, everything that you need, and should be suitable for the majority of systems. There's nothing actually stopping you getting multiple of these if you wanted to, if you wanted to kind of expand your loop at a later date. Uh, maybe you wanted to have a GPU loop separate to the CPU loop. So next 
Next page basically takes us through tubing. So we get the choice of fully transparent PVC soft tubing, uh, which comes in uh, 10, uh, 13, 10, so uh, outer diameter, inner diameter. Uh, and we get the clear PMMA uh, hard tubing. Uh, when you actually click on this, you do get a choice of either, either the, uh, the 10, 12 or 12, 10, however you want to word it, and the 10, 14. Um, and yeah, again, it changes the view. So when you look at this picture here, you can see this is the hard tubing and this is the soft tubing. So when you do that, um, yeah, you can basically choose what you want. We're going to go with the hard tubing. Uh, I, I am quite a fan of kind of the bigger, uh, thicker tubing, so we're going to go with that. And then just below, you get coolants and fittings. So if we click on coolant, you can actually change the color. So for me, because this kind of the pump res and all of the other components are RGB, I'd actually stick with a clear coolant. You don't want to sort of, you know, take it too far, uh, but you can obviously change to red, blue, purple, green, and I'm sure they're going to add other colors at a later date. Same with the fittings. You've got your chrome, you've got black, and you can see it changes in the picture again. Gold, if you really want to sort of go down that route, or white as well. Uh, I think chrome works really well with RGB and, uh, and the other sort of choices that we've made. Clicking on next, uh, it tells us about the commander. So your Corsair case or selected fan pack already contains products required for IQ integration. So again, it's kind of utilizing it uh, so you're not paying for things that you may already have. But it is recommending based on sort of the amount of rads that we've got, based on the amount of fans and everything that we are going to need a commander pro. We are going to need the uh, RGB fan LED hub and we are going to need uh, one uh, Y header cable as well, uh, just to kind of, you know, split things up a little bit. Click on next. And uh, again, necessary add-ons are included. So when we click on there, it actually drills down a little bit more into the fittings. So you can see that we've got our 45 degree angled ones and 90 degree, uh, degree ones, the uh, four packs, are, and there's three of them uh, required for installation. So a four pack of 14 mil outer diameter compression fittings. We've got our XT hardline tubing and then the uh, translucent clear uh, pre-mixed fluid. Uh, when we go to YQ, it tells us uh, again, sort of, you know, some of the components that we're going to need with the commander, the Node Pro, the RGB fan LED hub, and then tools, um, just simple stuff here, really. So you've got the performance thermal paste, um, and then you've also got your, your filling bottle as well. When we click on next, it gives us again that view of the system, but it looks really, really nice. I, I, I think, you know, that looks perfect. Um, obviously, the motherboard isn't the exact motherboard we chose, but it has uh, sort of given us the components that it knows is compatible with our processor and motherboard choice. And then it just gives us an overview of the whole system. So we've got sort of CPU water block, GPU water block, the radiators, the fans, the pump, uh, absolutely everything and then you get a few choices here so you can see straight away the configuration code if you remember from the beginning i said if you already had one you could copy that in so you could literally copy this over like you would on pc parts picker and uh, you could you know send this over to a friend get them to double check everything if you wanted to but knowing how this whole configurator works everything is going to be spot on um, you can also download your configuration so if you click on that it will simply download a pdf file you can download the build guide and it will give you a rough kind of general overview on you know how how to build everything but obviously you do get instructions with all of the components so with the gpu block you'll get a separate set of instructions to the cpu block and so forth and then you can click on find a retailer so uh, you can also email it as well but when you click on find a retailer um because that's, this is basically the reason i chose global at the beginning they are working on sort of doing this so it only brings up the the retailers in your country but you can see australia belgium germany uh, obviously in the uk uh, where i'm from you've got uh, overclockers you've got pc specialist and you've got scan as well uh, if you're in the united states you've got micro center and you've got uh, performance pcs as well uh, so yeah you get the choice there if you click on one of these it will simply take you through to the Corsair Hydro X um, sort of area on their website. Now we have actually been told by our Corsair representative that Scan for instance are actually looking to kind of build this configurator in to their website. So essentially you'd kind of have a bit of a white label solution. So this whole configurator will be built into the Scan website. You'll be able to sort of go through all of this like we've just done and then simply click on buy and all of the components will be added to your shopping basket already, uh, sort of pre-configurated, ready to go and uh, and off you go you know you can buy that get the stuff in and you can start building this amazing looking system so there you have it obviously we've now looked at i guess the easiest way it could possibly be to get everything ready and going for your system so everything from your gpu block to your rad to your coolant to your cpu block and to your pump res combo obviously as corsair manufacture more products in their kind of hydro x range we are going to see a lot more kind of being added to the configurator and we're also told a few other little things that while at the moment it's well, Corsair chassis, there is talk of uh, other manufacturers of chassis being on there because Corsair see the fact that even if, you know, you are the likes of Lian Lee or 
Cooler Master or one of the other kind of big brands out there, well, there's still no harm in selling some products to you directly. So there's that. And there's also talk that some of the retailers, so I guess in the UK, that would be Scan and Overclockers, and also in America, the likes of Newegg and some of the other kind of big retailers there, of actually having kind of, I guess, a white label configurator on their website. So you can put everything in and it will take you straight into the shopping cart and you can check out straight away. As opposed to kind of the way that we showed you, which was more kind of, I guess a little bit like Ikea, where you kind of get a PDF to print off and then you have to go and sort of order it all anyway. I guess it's the start of something very, very special, the start of making something very, very simple for people who maybe don't know exactly what they need when they're making their first custom loop setup. So yeah, I'm really interested to kind of see where this goes from here. So there you go, let me know in the comments section below, are you running a system with custom loop yourself? If you're not and you're looking at kind of delving into that market, is Corsair the way that you're gonna go or are you gonna go with one of the other kind of big brands out there? I really like what Corsair are doing at the moment. Not only have they brought these products out, which I even mentioned in the last video, have got a few added extra features, especially for novice users, they're now kind of trying to make it even easier. So yeah, from everything from air cooling up to AIO, we now have Corsair in the custom loop realm and I think it was a good choice. Let's see who's next. Cooler Master, Lian Lee, Antec. Who's gonna be next to kind of dip their toes into this market? Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I will see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye bye. Is kind of, you know, uh, I guess the way forward in your eyes of meh meh meh?